the emergency management. You'll recall uh, last year in 2019, uh, we had $1,000. As we moved forward, though, we progressed. The 12464 is a number that represents the reimbursement we get from home, State Homeland Security for right. our participation in the radiological programs and the drills. Right, it goes um, as an expenditure and comes back through the revenue. It comes yeah. back to the revenue. Now, that's, that was a great discussion. I watched that, too. Any comments or questions on that area? I do. Go ahead, Mr. Ladd. <clears throat> it seems to me that we have several issues that have come up over the last 18 months. From August to August, we had a threat of a hurricane, we had Legionnaire's disease, and we had a water ban. Uh, do you have any ideas, on, particularly on the water ban, where it's very difficult to communicate to the people at the beach, don't drink the water, they're not from here, they don't live here. Is there any thought being given to improving the way we notify these people? We, when we watched what happened with that and going back to the Legionnaires event, a number of things have, have taken place since uh, the water issue. Um, one of the discussions was utilizing a reverse 911 system. Uh, we're going to a system called Code Red. We're doing that through New Hampshire Homeland Security that will give uh, a number of people in town government um, access to the system for emergencies, but also for town notifications for things that aren't emergencies. Okay, the responsibility in the water event is Aquarians, but trying to be a proactive community and letting, letting particularly with the people that show up here, you know, in mass, trying to get the word out, we have to participate somehow with that. So that's an enhancement we're looking to get online, hopefully by the end of the year. Uh, we've started our initial steps. I actually have the cards. We just have to do an online course. Everybody that has access to the system has to take this online course. Uh, there's a handful in the police, the fire, and in the town office. Uh, so we're going to have, hopefully have that up and running by the end of the year. The other issue that we're talking about, I don't know if you saw the uh, selectmen's meeting last night, our variable message boards have yes. served us well, but they're in pretty rough shape right now. It, it's a hit or miss whether they're going to work for more than a day. Uh, the board has approved the purchase of, what was it, four front? Four. Four new variable message boards that will be programmable from a desktop, which means we don't have to physically go out, open up the box and do it, which will save it. So if we want a universal message in our boards in different locations of town, such as the boil water order, we can have that up in a couple of minutes compared to just having to drive around and set these things up. Uh, the other recommendation I've made, it's going to cost some money, it might be a capital improvement program, is having fixed message boards, similar to one you see out here at the Academy in specific locations like the front of the town office, um, the entry into the beach coming down 101, uh, coming over the beach on 1A, uh, over the bridge on 1A, and a couple other locations uh, where we can kind of get a majority of the people that are coming into this community, if there's a message like a boil water order, would get it through that means. Um, there are limitations though with what we can do because so many people today are on these, mm -hmm. okay? So in order for something like Code Red to work up, you would have to uh, call in, sign up, give us the numbers and the emails you want to get those on, and those would be plugged into the system. But to get into a, somebody that's, you know, up traveling from, the, from Massachusetts or wherever they're coming from and visiting to get a message out to them, that would take uh, – something beyond our capacity in this community. That would take, if we had a disaster or something going on, when we needed to evacuate the beach, we had a radiological event on a warm, sunny day, that's going to take New Hampshire Homeland Security through their abilities to get into the, the systems where they can put out a message wide broadcast. But we couldn't do that uh, here. Could you consider just flying airplanes with banners <laughs> over the beach as a kind of 19th century temporary solution. <laughs> there are thousands of people on that beach mm -hmm. who are totally unaware of what's going yeah. on, but theoretically are at risk. Um, I would think that. that probably the way I would address something like that is one of the variable message boards will probably spend a lot of time up by the flower pots um, towards the Ashworth, because when we set that one up, that can be seen by a lot of people. The state also re, uh, just left the park meeting. They've also recently purchased a variable message board for their lots that, you know, we will coordinate messaging with them if we had something like that that we had to put out. 
one final broad base question. Are we at the point where we could benefit from an emergency management committee with you as its director? I think if people want to have a discussion about emergency management, I'm open to sitting down with people just like we do when we have the, the issues of the North Shore. I'll call a community meeting if people, if there's enough people interested or concerned about it, I'll sit down and talk with them and I, I do like listening to other people's ideas on it. Mm -hmm. It's just statutorily you have to understand that the statute requires a director. There is no language uh, describing a committee. That's not to say we can't have one. Uh, the Board of Selectmen could uh, impanel a committee to assist me or just to vet ideas or look for things. Um, I'll tell you the biggest area with emergency management in this town that we're dealing with uh, lately is the flooding issues and people wanting availability to grants when they have these repetitive property losses. How can we help them address those costs? Because it, it's, it's tough working between FEMA, the state entity, and the local trying to get that done. And isn't that a pretty good argument for expanding the support to you? You're now being tasked with things that really were never considered police tasking work issues years ago. Writing FEMA grants, uh, getting involved with raising properties. Well, we're very fortunate that one of the groups that's been helping us with that is the uh, Rockingham Planning. Uh, yeah. commi uh, is it commission? Commission. Commission. Right. commission. Yeah. Um, they're very proactive in helping with those things. We've been meeting with them on a, on a regular basis, trying to move forward as to giving our residents the best opportunity to recoup their loss through the proper granting programs. I don't know if a committee of our own would be as effective as the Rockingham Planning because they're looking, when you deal with an entity like FEMA or you know the NRC when we're dealing with issues with the plant, they don't, they look at a bigger view than we do, okay? They want to see that we have a plan, that we're going to follow, you know, those keynote things when we're supposed to start making movements, continuity of government issues. That's what they're looking at. And to be successful with the grants, I think, yeah, you have to have somebody that's kind of used to dealing at that level. So I don't know if we, a committee would be the way to go. I mean, yeah, a grant writer would be great, but if we're getting it from the Rockingham Planning Commission and it's somebody that's used to dealing with those federal and state entities beyond what we would be, I think that's probably the way to go. I think that would wind up going the way of the Highway Safety Committee. It's a great idea and people have good ideas, but it's awful hard to get people to participate after a while. Do you think there would be talent in this community? Oh, absolutely. I, I know of a number of people that have the resumes to be emergency management director that aren't police or fire. No, I don't mean director. To I'm, I'm just saying that's where the talent to. level is. Yeah. That's, we have very talented people I've had these discussions yeah. with that come to you and they, we've had people that are emergency management directors in other communities they lived in. Yeah. So there is a talent level uh, with that. It's just trying to work within what we already have to work with, with the state entity and the federal entity, adding another layer to it. I don't know if that would be helpful or more cumbersome. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I'm certainly willing to sit down and listen to what people have to say. So, Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Uh, LeBranch. Yes, Chief, you mentioned flooding. The recent flooding um, that we had within the last couple of weeks at King yep. Tide, I think it was. And did you activate and use that high water vehicle at all? We didn't have a need for it. Uh, we didn't have anybody calling to get removed from it. And uh, the way we worked that, we, we worked that somewhat jointly with the fire service. When we're going to have an event where we know it's going to be, we're going to be able to staff that. It seats three. So it's got a driver, a seat, a B seat, and a jump seat. And it's big enough that if we had to put, you know, fire personnel for uh, EMTs up in there with us, that's how we would get them down there so we're not running expensive pieces of fire apparatus through the breath, through that salt water. And that so. thing has is has all the equipment it needs in it, the radios and things like that? No, we didn't equip it with a radio. We felt in the area of operation we would use it. It's going to be in proximity, proximity to the police station anyhow. You can use handheld. And believe it or not, our handheld radio system, mm -hmm. uh, we have a very robust uh, booster system here where we don't have, like a lot of the communities in the, in the uh, seacoast have dead spots because they're trying to commu communicate with Brentwood. Right. We're right here and our communication center is right on the beach yep. and we built some, some real 
redundancy into the system that Good. even if one area fails, mm -hmm. another area is going to pick it up. Thank so you. And we just use the portables. One other thing, because um, I was watching on uh, television, and WMUR, I think it was, was mm -hmm. down there. It was one of the stations. And I saw one of our cruisers driving down Ashworth Ave in probably a foot of water. Yeah. Do you have an SOP where when you do that, then that cruiser is required to take it uptown and wash it like within a day or two? We, our, our fleet maintenance people are on top of it and the, and the guys are very good. Once we get through any type of storm event or water event, first thing we do, we're right up here, we use a, we use a local car wash okay. and we usually run them through at least a couple times. Thank you very so much. So that's a, that's a regular thing. That we do because we we have had those areas oh, where you won't see you won't see it on a line car. Okay, a line car is usually gone in a three-year period. So before that rust sets in, we've already gotten rid of it. Where you see it, where we've had frames rust and actually have to deadline the car, has always been detectives or administrative vehicles because we tend to keep those seven to ten years as opposed to the three. Right. So those right. are the cars that really suffer the damage from it. So yeah. we just whenever we have those type of events, we get them right up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very so, much. Thank you, Mr. LeBranch. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Mara. I would just like to make a comment <clears throat> in a positive way. When you were talking about the water and how you are going to get the word out, <clears throat> I can think of nothing better. They have to come in one way yep. from 1A and 103. If they don't see those signs, and then you have them down by the Ashworth and something else. I was actually thinking about the plane myself, but I was kind of laughing. I won't we'll throw that out. But yeah, summertime. I mean, how, many times, how many places are they going to be? You, you can't miss it. You'd be amazed. Yeah. That the problem is, is when we have a weather event or the flooding, it is fascinating, you know, just having grown up around here, it is fascinating to watch. <clears throat> but also growing up here, I know that, you know, the last place I want to be standing is up on the seawall. <laughs> Now, the last weather event, I, there was a picture of the Hampton Union. It's still posted. There's a guy yeah. holding his child as the water splashing over. Now, all around him, you can see Rocks. debris. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why would you hold your, your five-year-old up? And it just, it, it, it's always boggling to me that people would, probably very intelligent people, yeah. but they see something that's magnificent to see and witness. Maybe we take it for granted. They come from all over when we have a big storm. When, when they hear the waves are crashing or we have a king tide, we have to chase people away mm -hmm. because it's, it's almost like a, an amusement ride for them. They, they just they see the waves crashing and it's, you don't get to see that every day or everywhere and they just come down and no matter how many signs we put up, how many, we mean constantly people going around the barricades when we set them up on High Street. Um, it's just a constant thing. I remember we had barricades set up right in front of the police station and the fire station won one of these events. And somebody decided not to do it, and she went about halfway under, right in front of the police station. Fortunately, the fire guys were in the house. They put on the wetsuits and went and got her right in front of the fire station. And there were signs everywhere. It's just, people are going to do what they can. No matter how many precautions and how much word we put out, yeah. there's going to be a certain percentage of the population that are just going to defy it for whatever reason. Do you arrest them for stupidity? No, no, we don't. Well, maybe we should, but we don't. It was a tragic accident on an ocean liner where some gentleman was holding a baby, uh, his yeah. grandchild. But yeah. A total tragic. Yeah. And just you like get on the wall there, you can equally yeah. be flushed away with the ocean. Oh. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Mar. Anything? Anybody else have any? Did we move this number? I, uh, we, do we, yeah, I thought we did move the. the okay. I don't think we did. The final number. No, uh, no the. Total emergency management. Oh, 12, yeah, go ahead. Twelve thousand four sixty-four. Moved by Mr. Brattle, second. seconded by Mr. Pluff for the emergency management. Um, before we let Chief Slayer go, an excellent job, and Deputy Chief Hobbs, just to give the public an example. So, if you added up the police budget and you added up the, uh, the parking lots and you added up emergency management, ex excluding the. Uh, um, the 12,000 because that comes back as revenue and you look at the animal control we're talking a big responsibility in four million seven hundred thirty thousand I mean we're getting I, I think we're getting a great bargain when you look at all the things that they have to do in the police department I mean it's really amazing and the only other thing I want to add for the for the chief Sawyer is that you, know, you mentioned emergency management and I look at chief Sawyer and deputy Hobbs deputy cutting and chief uh, Aon they're so involved and respected at the state level, and you have to remember, he's right about the, uh, the mandate, the emergency management director, that position 
You were actually in the command central with state and federal agencies. You technically fall under the command of the st when, when anything exceeds our ability to handle right. at our level, yep. and the governor invokes his powers, we actually fall under the chain of, of state government. As you remember, we're all, every community is a subdivision of state government, so they can invoke that. So that's why they require the local entity to have a, an emergency management director to coordinate those efforts between the two. So. And you know, it's interesting, Bob, and, and Richard remember the year, but when Chief Sullivan, Jamie Sullivan's chief, in conjunction with the governor, they closed down the beach. Yeah. It was their decision. Yeah. That's how critical <coughs> the emergency management director position is. But I agree with what you're saying, and I think with what we saw in Channel 9 with Deputy Hale on, and you know that both chiefs are going to be very involved with Coastal, DES, and everybody in the town manager. So we've got a good team here, and I think the biggest thing is to keep these grants coming and the, the information flowing, and Stevens on the Hampton Seabrook Estuary, and I'll tell you, we got some great stuff happening. So I, I, I see some great results happening, but uh, thanks for bringing that up. Any further questions? Chiefs, th thank you so much for coming thank tonight, you. and uh, Deputy Hobbs, thank, thank you. you. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank you. I'm going to yes. be in Las Vegas. How could I know? How to uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.